five different reasons why you must leave men who don't chase you in consistency because you have to understand when we're talking about men who don't chase a lot of times it's not even just about you it's also about them and their mindset towards relationships in general remember when i talked to you guys about dating apps we talk about dating apps all the time you're spending a lot of time in an environment where majority of the men who even come there on the dating app are only looking for the quickest, easy, and most painless thing possible. We refer to those men as microwave men. A man who is looking for the most quick, easy, and painless path to squirtle as possible. If you don't know what squirtle is, use your brain. I'm sure you're a smart, intelligent woman. If you don't know what squirtle is still, you probably your squirrel's not squirtling. Now, inconsistency is always going to present itself in the men who are not interested in chasing you. Because if he's not interested in chasing you, why would he be consistent with you? Because chasing is not just about doing it once, not just about doing it twice. It's about him applying pressure to you all the time, 24 seven. And if he's not doing that, if he's not interested in that, if he's not even in the headspace to be chasing after you, you're gonna be very confused why you're not sure where you stand with this man. And remember what I talked about, confusion is the opposite of clarity. So if you have a lot of confusion, that means there's not a lot of clarity and vice versa. If you have a lot of clarity, there's not a lot of confusion. A lot of you are getting into these situationships, these talking stages, these whatever you want to call them ships, and you're confused. So is the guy. Everyone's confused. Nobody knows where things are going. Nobody knows where things stand. Nobody knows what direction anyone is moving in. Okay. And this is part of the reason why you must leave the men who are not prepared to chase you alone. That inconsistency is going to be confusing and is going to literally drain the life out of you. Suck the soul out of you. Not in a good way. I, I'm serious because that inconsistency is going to have you so confused, so uncertain all the time that you're not going to know how to go about anything. You're not going to know where you stand on anything. You're not going to know what you should be doing about anything. And the most amazing part about the men who don't chase you and the inconsistency that that brings and the confusion that that brings, funny enough, that confusion always leads to mistakes on both people's parts. Because when both part parties are operating under this confusing state, well, now I thought we were exclusive. No, no, I thought we weren't exclusive. I thought we were doing a thing where we can still date other people. So you went out on dates. Oh, but I thought that that was okay. No, 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 it's not okay. Oh, but you slept with this person. I thought we were, ex no, but we're not exclusive. We're doing a thing where we're not really a thing, but we're a thing only when we're around each other to be a thing. Wait, what? I'm, I'm so confused. I don't, I don't understand. And so all these mistakes begin happening in the situationship, in the relationship, in the whatever ship, because of that inconsistency, which creates that uncertainty, which creates that confusion. I know that it sounds strange and I know that it sounds weird. And I know that it sounds, I should only be with the man who's willing to chase. Yes. Yes. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to be in your proper feminine state. Now I'm not here to tell you what it means to be a woman or what your feminine state should be as you exist. All I am saying is that you're not going to feel very feminine when the man who you're trying to build a relationship with is not even trying to court you or chase after you or show you that he wants to be with you. You're not going to feel very womanly, very feminine. I can guarantee you that. And that is part of what that inconsistency does to you. You're so unsure of yourself. You can't even embody the natural state that you want to exist in, in your femininity. You're, you're starting to live in this place, and we'll talk about fear state in a little bit. You're just living in this place of uncertainty where you don't know where to go. You don't know what's safe. You don't know how to act. All that confusion is wasting time because anytime there's that much inconsistency, anytime you find yourself in a relationship with a guy who's not willing to chase after you, you're only going to find one destination, and that is the ending of the relationship. And so the longer you string yourself along, notice I said string yourself along, notice I said string yourself along, the worse it's going to be for you because you're wasting more and more and more of your own time, not more and more and more of someone else's time. 
Okay, not not even more and more of his time because he's getting access to your squirtle. You're wasting your own time because as you continue trying to force the relationship, you know what I mean? You're trying to force the the round, is it the square peg into the round hole? That's how you say the saying. The more you try to force that, the worse it's going to be. And the more frustrated you're going to be rather than just identifying, okay, this man clearly isn't interested in chasing me. I should leave this alone. Okay, this is where I might go on a rant because this kind of annoys me. Okay, and I know that a lot of you mean well. You guys aren't bad people for this. I, I, I get a lot of DMs, okay? A lot of messages from all of you, and they're amazing. I read quite a few, not all of them, but I read quite a few. And I've noticed a theme that a lot of you are finding yourself in a place. You guys aren't ugly people, okay? Let's get that straight. You, none of you are ugly. Well, most of you aren't ugly, okay? and you, it's getting men to be attracted to you is not your problem. The problem is when you like a guy, you do this thing where you're like hyperventilating, like, oh my God, I like you so much. I like you so much. Can we do everything together? Can I live in your body? Can I breathe your air? And it, it pushes people away. But what also happens is sometimes you like these guys that aren't that particularly interested in you. Okay. And you like them a lot. So you're busy trying to figure out how to get him to like you. But it, you're trying so hard that it's actually off-putting. This is why I said don't even bother with the men who aren't willing to chase after you. Because if you find yourself in a place where you're liking someone so much and that man's not even willing to chase after you, you're, you're just literally wasting your time. Like that's only going to turn into absolutely nothing. And the reason I bring that up and bring up your messages is because I know some of you are in that place where you're actively trying to get a guy to chase you who's not even interested in chasing you or anyone in the first place. Number two, we have role reversal. Remember, I talked to you guys about feminine, masculine. Yesterday, we talked about feminine, masculine. Okay, I'm a guy, so I'm not here to tell you what it means to be a woman. That's not what I'm here. What I am here, though, is we can all have a collective understanding that in a straight heterosexual relationship, okay, I don't speak on anything else because that's all I know. That's all I've experienced. In a straight heterosexual relationship, the man generally plays the masculine role and the woman plays the feminine role. Doesn't mean that one's more important or better than the other. They just play different roles. They're different individuals. Now, when you are with a man who is not willing and doesn't want to chase after you and you're trying to force that relationship to happen, you're going to reverse the roles. You're going to start becoming the man and he's going to start embodying the woman. I don't mean physically. I mean mentally and spiritually because you'll find yourself in a place where instead of him trying to impress you. Remember, I give you guys the example of, I know when I say nature, you guys are like, oh, nature, nature, nature. It's in our biology. The male, let's give the example of the male and the female peacock, right? The female peacock's there, she's chilling. And the male peacock, in order to mate with the female peacock, obviously we're not peacocks, we're human beings, but still, the male peacock will spread his feathers. He'll have this amazing pattern. He'll do a little dance, right? All to impress the female peacock, right? So that he can mate with her. Obviously, we're not peacocks. I'm just giving you the concept and the analogy that maybe you can help you understand what I'm talking about. In our lives, in our relationships, you're meant to be in your feminine state. You're meant to be receiving these men. They're attracted to you. They want you. They want to be with you. Okay. You're evaluating because you're super attractive. You're super desirable, right? We talked about building desire and creating desire. You're evaluating which man do I want to be with. I have my pick of all the men because I'm super attractive, super desirable. Everyone wants me. Now I get to choose which one of these men will be lucky enough to be with me. When the roles get reversed, you will find yourself doing the things that the man is supposed to be doing. When I say the things that the man is supposed to be doing, you're going to find yourself chasing after him. Why? Because remember what I talked to you guys about when you're with these men that aren't really interested in you and never really liked you in the first place, but you want so badly for him to like you, you start to force the issue by texting him all the time, calling him all the time, reaching out to him all the time, justifying the fact that he doesn't text you or call you or reach out to him by saying, oh, you know, maybe he's busy. Maybe he just didn't see my message. Maybe he just, maybe he just this, maybe he just that, maybe he just, maybe he just doesn't like you. Okay. Maybe he just doesn't like you. And 
the faster you can get through that hurdle of realizing that he maybe just doesn't like you. And it's not that he had his phone off for the last eight, eight days. Okay. Or he was busy for the last four weeks. And the quicker you realize that actually I'm chasing after him, the quicker you can pick up your pants, pick up your boots, pick up your, I don't know, just pick yourself off the floor and have some self-respect that you're a woman and you're not meant to be chasing after this man and trying to impress him and show him, oh my God, please look at me. Please pay attention to me. Please, 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 please notice me. We will never be attracted to the women. Please notice me. Uh, please, I need attention. Please, can you love me? Please, I just, please, please, please. I know I don't have a dump truck like she does. I know I don't look like she does. I know I'm not amazing like she is. But can you please love me? I just need someone to love me. You know what? They just look at you. They just go, oh my God, she's a train wreck. Oh my God. And then the second thought they have is, oh, she's a train wreck, but I could take advantage of her. Yeah, I could probably get what I want from her. No commitment, no nothing. I could string her along. Look how desperate she is. That's literally, that's the, that's the two thoughts that they have. The first thought is, oh my God, she's, she's, she's gross. She's, she's a train wreck. And the second thought is I could definitely take advantage of her. And when you have that role reversal, okay. And that, like I said, this is mental and spiritual. People are receiving and feeling that, that desperation, that, that desperation for validation, that anxiety of please be with me. Oh my God. If you're not with me, I'm going to die. Oh my God. I, you, it's gotta be you. It's gotta be you. Please, please. I'm begging you that, that, that you carry that around with you. People can feel that. Okay. People can sense that. When you're trying to build relationships with these men that don't chase you, remember that inconsistency leads to a lot of uncertainty, okay? And that uncertainty puts you in a state where you're like trying to hoard him. You're trying to chase after him. Remember, this dynamic is flowy. It's ongoing. So if you're taking steps forward, he has to take steps back. If you're taking too many steps forward, he's all the way back. And only when you take steps backward, if he's interested in you, if he's interested in you, if he's interested in you, can he take some steps forward? Okay. And you can get guys to be more interested in you and you can get guys to actually want you and be attracted to you. The problem is some of you are so far in this area over here. You're like damn near off the screen, pushing so far towards him that by the time you pull back, you realize you were pushing towards someone who wasn't even interested in you in the first place. You're, you're literally pushing towards someone who didn't even like you and only had you around for the convenience of the fact that he knew he didn't have to do anything for you. He doesn't chase after you. He's not loyal to you. He's not paying attention to your needs. He doesn't care about your needs, but because you're there all the time, he's like, sure. If you want me to take advantage of you, sure. I'll take advantage of you. I got nothing better to do on a Saturday afternoon. It would literally be like someone walking up to you on the street and offering you a hundred dollar bill for the simple fact that you're the most beautiful woman on earth literally no strings attached and was like, please take my hundred dollar bill. You might at first be like, Oh, is this a scam? Are you sure? No, please take my hundred dollar bill. You're the most attractive, beautiful woman I've ever seen. Eventually you'll be like, I mean, if you're literally begging me to take your hundred dollar bill, sure. I'll take it. I don't have to do anything for it. Sure. I'll take it. Right. And that's how these men feel about you. You're reversing the roles. You're becoming the man. You're going leaning so far into him, trying to chase after him, trying to get him to pay attention to you, trying to get him to validate you, trying to get him to want you. He goes, I mean, sure, I'll be the girl I'll receive. Okay. I'll sit back. I'll relax. I'll let you show me how amazing you are and I'll still give you nothing in return, but I'll still get a lot of good things for myself and you'll quickly become the man planning dates, planning hangouts, calling him all the time texting him all the time. For those of you who are on Snapchat, you guys know how I feel about on, about Snapchat, but Snapchatting him all the time, sending him memes 24 seven. And it's not until you stop doing that, that you realize you were the one pursuing him because he also feels more feminine having you chasing after him. He doesn't feel like he has the space to be interested in you, to be a man about the situation where he's like, I want you, I big strong man. I show you I better than all men. I fight to the death for other man to, uh, with other men. Ah, uh, right. That truly, I know I, truly that's what will make him feel like a man. 
that he can be man enough to get you because you're like this prize on a pedestal and he's got to be the strongest, most capable uh, knight in all of the land to get the beautiful princess, right? That gets them, that gets them hard. That gets them feeling good, feeling aged. If he can't feel like that because you're chasing after him left and right, all in his face, left and right, trying to, oh, please, I want to be the one. Please, please make it me. Please, I want to be the one so badly. He's, he can't feel like the man. He can't feel like that masculine, ah, big strong man energy, right? He becomes more feminine. That doesn't make him feel good. Number three, we have fear state. Talked about this earlier when we talked about inconsistency, even a little bit with role reversal. Because when that uncertainty hits, when you start becoming the man chasing after him and you're doing all these things for him and you're trying to show him, please pick me, please want me. I want you to be, please. I'm so desperate for you. Please, 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 please. And you're begging, you're begging, you're begging and you're anxious and you're anxious. You're going to be in such a huge fear state. You're going to start doing some crazy things, doing and saying some crazy things. And you're going to start allowing some crazy things. And we'll get to that. This fear state is very, very bad. I know I talked to you guys, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where I talked to you guys, there is a healthy amount of fear that we all should have in our relationships or our friendships or our partnerships or our whatever ships. There's a healthy amount of fear to have. However, being in a fear state because a man won't chase you is not the healthy type of fear. The healthy type of fear I'm referring to is the fear that if you don't act right or do right, your partner will leave you. That's if you're in a committed relationship where both of you are actually interested and committed to each other. That's healthy fear. The fear state that you'll be in when you're trying to make a relationship work with a man who won't chase you is a fear state centered around the anxiety of not wanting that man to leave you and wanting him to like you so much that you're willing to depart from any of your own morals or values. And this might hit home with some of you because when you're in that fear state, you're going to allow a lot of things to happen that you wouldn't regularly allow. You're going to allow him to do a lot of things that you wouldn't re regularly allow. You're going to look past a lot of things that you wouldn't regularly look past because that fear state is telling you, do anything to make this work. Say anything to make this work. Allow anything that this will continue working. Because why? The roles have been reversed. You're now the man chasing after him. You're so desperate and you're so uncertain because of the inconsistency. You're like trying to take it into your own hands to make this relationship work now. And now that you've taken it into your own hands, you're fearful that if I say the wrong thing, he won't like me anymore. If I do the wrong thing, he's not going to want me anymore. I've got to be so perfect and so agreeable and so absolutely amazing that he doesn't see anything wrong with me. Here's the problem though. You're not perfect. It's okay. Nobody is. And you're going to be like sitting there. Imagine he's like trying to walk past you. And every time he tries to walk past you, you're like sitting there. No, don't leave. No, please don't leave. And you're like putting your hands up. No, please, please. Every time he's trying to walk, please, no, don't leave. No, you're, you're like trying to block the exit. You're like trying to block the exit. And he's showing you he wants to leave. And you're like, I'll do anything. Just don't leave. Just don't leave. I'll do anything. I always talk to you guys about making yourself feel whole, doing things for yourself, figuring out what makes you feel fulfilled, satisfied, happy brings you joy in life outside of boys, the things you want to do, not with boys, by yourself, because you enjoy them. And giving yourself your own validation, doing things that help you give yourself your own validation. All of this stuff that is so important that you don't end up in a place where you're trying so badly to make it work with a, work with a guy who's not even willing to chase you because he's not interested in you that you then are fearful of, oh my God, if you're not with me, then you're not going to validate me. Oh my God, if you're not with me, then I'm not going to get attention anymore. Oh my God, if you're not with me, then who's going to love me? Number four, we have disrespect. Remember how I told you that the guys can sense when you're desperate for this attention and this validation. And we're obviously talking about why you need to leave the men alone who are not willing to chase you. I promise you, when you're in this fear state, right? And in that mind frame, oh, I got to have you. I got to make this work. I'll do anything. No, it's okay. I'll whatever you want. I'll do it because you're so uncertain. You're the, you're, you're, you're the man. Now you're the doing the chasing. I promise you as soon as he begins to feel that 
he will start disrespecting you. This is why you can't mess with the men who are not willing to chase you. When you're trying to make that work with the men who don't even want to chase you in the first place, and you're continuing to try to make that work, he'll begin to disrespect you for two reasons. One, because he doesn't even respect the fact that he is actively showing you he's not interested in you, but yet you're continuing to push the envelope. He also doesn't respect the fact that he... I don't want to get mad. Guys, while they might be emotionally stunted, they are not idiots, okay? When I say that, I really mean he is not oblivious to how he's treating you. If he is inconsistent, he doesn't call really, he doesn't text, he's he he's busy a lot. He's here one day, he's 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 hot one day, he's cold the next day. He's not really taking you out. He's not really trying to court you. He's not trying to take you on dates. He's not really trying to do anything with you but spend time at his house in his bed. He is not oblivious to that. Do you think if he had an opportunity with with Kim Kardashian or Megan Good or Rihanna or whoever do you think he would approach the situation and the woman like that? All nonchalant. Oh, I didn't realize I didn't text you in two weeks. Oh, I didn't realize that I, I've never even asked you out on a date. Oh, I didn't realize that we never talk about anything real and I only invite you over at 2 a.m. Do you think if he had the opportunity of a lifetime with the woman that he's been wanting, his celebrity crush, do you think he would be so oblivious to all of his actions? Or do you think he would button himself up and try and put his best foot forward? This is why I say when you start reversing your role and you become the man and you're doing the pursuing and chasing, you start doing a lot of justification for why you're pursuing and chasing him instead. Because the reality of it is when he's being a man, you know that he'd be pursuing any woman that he really wanted. And the only the only reason He's not pursuing you. He's not chasing after you is because truly he's not that interested in you. And the quicker you can accept that, the better off your life will be. Not because you're not desirable, not because you're not worth being chased after, but you have to understand if you're doing the chasing, you're never going to be able to build a real relationship with that man, which means you're just wasting your time. When you're in that fear state, you're going to allow anything to happen. You're going to allow him to say whatever. You're going to put all your morals and values to the side because you're so fearful of him leaving. You're in so much anxiety that he won't want you, that he won't be interested in you, that he's not going to show you attention and love anymore, that you allow him to do things to you, talk to you, treat you in a way that you, if you were to stand back and look at it from a third person perspective, you'd be like, damn, I can't believe I let that person treat me like that. This is why you can't be in a position where you're the man chasing after him. Like I said, I'm only talking about straight heterosexual relationships, okay? For for us, that doesn't work like that, where you're going to be the woman chasing after that man. He's only going to look over your head, disrespect you, and the time he does spend with you will be time that he couldn't spend doing anything else. And be, just because it was convenient for him, he chose to spend that time that he had that was extra with you simply because he didn't have to do anything for it. And he'll disrespect you because he knows he doesn't have to respect you. You only get the respect in this world that you demand. Nothing more, nothing less, whether you're a man or a woman, okay? When you're in that fear state because you're the one chasing after him, and he disrespects you, it will be because you allow him to disrespect you. When he recognizes that you're not going to stand up for yourself because you're so much in fear, he is going to disrespect you simply for the fact that he understands you will never speak up for yourself. He will always be able to push the boundaries. He will never have to put in any effort or consistency or work to get access to you. And as time goes on, the disrespect only continues and continues and continues. And he only continues and continues to take more and more advantage of you. Don't blame him for taking advantage of you. Blame yourself for allowing yourself to be taken advantage of. Once that starts, once the disrespect train starts, it's never going to stop until you force it to stop. But the problem is if you're in a fear state, you're never gonna force it to stop. You're never gonna be able to even feel like you can stop it because you're gonna be so scared that if you speak up for yourself, he'll stop liking you. He'll stop being interested in you. You're, you're so busy trying to be perfect for him, to be so agreeable that you're just an empty shell that he doesn't even think about or look towards or chase after 
or have any desire for because everything that you embody is please i'll do anything you want however you want me to do it i won't have any opinions or thoughts except for the ones that you want me to have number five we have lower standards because once you're in that fear state once you're so scared that oh my god you might leave me oh my god you might not want me oh my god you might not be interested in me anymore you're going to begin lowering your standards and your morals and your values, like I said earlier, to a point where you have none. One, because you want so badly for him to be with you. But as this happens, as this fear grows, that he might leave you, that he might not give you validation, that he, he might walk away from you, and you have to chase after him. When that guy finally does walk away, and it doesn't work out, that fear transfers to the next partner you find yourself in a situation ship with. Now, even though that guy hasn't done anything to put you in fear, you're now in this perpetual cycle. Perpetual just means constant cycle of fear where you're any guy you're with, you're in fear that he's going to leave you and he's not going to like you and he's not going to want you. So what does that lead to? The role reversal. What does that lead to? The disrespect. Okay. Because you start chasing again, you start chasing the man and eventually your standards overall for all men that you meet that come across you lower because you start to realize that any man that is worth anything ends up not liking me because I like him. And so I do all this other stuff. I become the man I start chasing. And so he ends up not liking me. I've got to lower my standards. Maybe that's because that's what you start thinking. If all these men, it doesn't work out with because I'm chasing them or well, for whatever reason, right? Maybe you don't realize that you're chasing them. You start to say, maybe I need to shoot for lower quality men. Maybe I need to spend my time on the dating apps with the guys who aren't even willing to step outside of their house to meet me. They just have to take their index finger and swipe left or swipe right on me and another 500 women. Maybe those are the guys I should be looking for. Maybe those are the guys I should be spending my time around. Maybe those are the guys who I'm worth it to. And your standards lower and lower and lower and lower until you're literally scraping the bottom of the barrel guys just hoping that one of those bottom of the barrel guys will actually like you and treat you how you want to be treated and the problem with that is every time each one of those guys breaks your heart or it doesn't work out that fear transfers because majority of you in that situation aren't actually spending time healing that fear state you just Take that fear state, you put it on pause, and then when you meet the next guy, you put it on play again. And your standards consistently lower and lower and lower because you're hoping that this next guy will like you. And maybe if he's not as important, not as successful, not as rich, not as powerful, not as amazing as the other guys you were dating, maybe this guy will be the one that actually chases after you. Maybe this guy will be the one that actually wants to pursue you. Maybe this guy will be the one that is actually interested in you. And you don't have to be the one interested in him, wondering why he doesn't text you, wondering why he doesn't want to take you out on dates, wondering why he doesn't want to pursue you whatsoever, wondering why he's always too busy to make any time to spend with you, wondering why the only time he wants to see you is 2 a.m. after he leaves the club. Eventually, your standards will lower so much because you'll begin to believe that is all that you deserve is the bottom of the barrel, guys the dating app guys, the microwave men that are looking for the most quick, easy and painless thing possible. And remember what I said, when you spend a lot of time with microwave men, that will create a bias around what you think the entire world is like. And all the men are like, you're, you're always going to think that nobody meets in real life. If the only place you meet guys is on dating apps, you're going to feel like everyone is on dating apps and nobody's going outside of their house to meet people in real life. That's what you're going to feel like. That doesn't make it the truth. That's what you're going to feel like because that's what your world is surrounded with. So when you surround yourself with low quality men and microwave men, you're going to convince yourself that all men are only looking for to get your squirtle on the first night. If they can't get it on the first night, they're going to be uninterested in you. But what do you think that's going to do to you after experiencing that over and over and over and over again? You're going to begin going out into your relationships and you're always going to be dealing with men with the understanding that if I don't give you my squirrel on this very first night, you're going to be uninterested in, in me. And so now you've created your own subconscious pressure that I'm going to give every single guy that I like the squirrel on the first night, because if I don't, you're going to be uninterested in me and I don't want you to be uninterested in me.